Hey everybody, this is Brian with TheUnlocker.com and today we're here with the HTC Thunderbolt but we're talking in pretty general terms about the various types of ROMs you're going to see for uh, different devices, whether your device is made by HTC, Motorola, Samsung, there are three main different types of ROMs uh, that you're likely to see and we're going to show those to you right now. The three main types of ROMs we're going to be talking about are the hacked or otherwise known as the modded ROM and then we're going to be talking about the AOSP ROM, Android Open Source Project ROMs. These are the ROMs that are built from source like Cyanogen Mod. And then we're going to be looking at the MyUI ROM which is a Chinese ROM that's really caught on to a number of different devices and offers some unique features. So without further ado we're going to get started with the hacked and modded ROMs. Alright, the first ROM we're looking at is a hacked or modded ROM and this is called Liquid Smooth Vigor Sense and it's made by a developer named Liquid who does pretty good work on a number of devices and we're going to see here that this looks much like the stock uh, Thunderbolt in terms of the home screens, the widgets, things like that. You will notice on the home screen that we do have uh, 3D effects and things like that. That's not actually available on the HTC Thunderbolt it is something that was added in with the HTC Evo 3D and later HTC versions uh, and the Thunderbolt doesn't support it so it's nice to see that, uh, that that's added now what it also is done is this is optimized and sped up and it's a much faster device um, because of this lighter weight ROM and it packs more features and we can look and see that our personalization options are still available we can still add widgets, shortcuts, and things like that. But some of our menus and options and things like that are a little bit different. But for the most part, the home screen and the experience here is much the same as it is with the HTC Thunderbolt on stock. Now for the notification settings, we still have our same pull down here. Uh, but with the stock Thunderbolt, we had a uh, little scrolling list back and forth here, which would show us our recently used applications, which is pretty redundant and uh, I really don't see a huge need for it. Here, this has been optimized and we still have our recent apps if we want them and this is what it gives you which is very stock uh, Thunder, Thunderbolt but uh, we don't have this quick settings here. So here we've got the ability to change you know, our volume settings. We can turn on a, a flashlight which would be nice if you're in the dark somewhere and don't want to hunt for where your flashlight application is. Uh, we've got Bluetooth, that kind of thing all integrated into our notifications panel. So our notifications panel on this particular ROM is much more robust than it is on stock. Let's talk briefly about the settings menu and the reason we're being so brief on it is because this is pretty much what you get with a stock HTC build. Uh, all of the icons and things like that may look a little bit different in hacked or modded ROMs. I believe these are pretty much stock HTC. Uh, icons and things like that but you're going to see the same types of list and the same types of uh, settings there's really nothing going to be out of place and they're, they're not categorized any differently than you typically see in your uh, stock build so if you're comfortable with the stock settings you're going to feel right at home here now in terms of themes with the hacked or modded ROM it, what you're typically going to get is either the, the developer is going to have themed it already and it's going to look a little different than stock or it'll look exactly like stock and you may have some additional themers that are creating files that can be loaded on top of the ROM to give it a different look and appearance. Uh, in this case, I mean, we're just going to take a look at what HTC offers because it's much the same that you would get with your HTC device in terms of how you're going to consistently change your look. Uh, here in the personalization option, you can change the scene, the skin, wallpapers, the lock screen style. So we can come in here, and right now we've got the uh, weather as our, our current lock screen. So if we power off the phone or power off the screen, we now get this cool weather uh wallpaper that comes up and we can simply unlock it like this or we can pull an application into this ring and these are all features of Sense 3.0 that didn't originally come on the Thunderbolt but have been ported over on these hacked ROMs. So uh, that's a look at what you can do for personalization for the hacked or modded ROM. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is performance and that's pretty much a uh, an important aspect of the device and of the ROM. It really doesn't matter what it looks like and a lot of the manufacturers are kind of having a lot of pushback because they try to make their ROMs very beautiful and they try to make the widgets very nice but eventually 
uh, things get very laggy and slow because their overlays are very heavy. Well, in, in this case, with the hacked and modded ROMs, what's not needed is typically cut out and nice features like these 3D clock animations and things like that are added in. And they're usually added in, and I can tell you in this ROM, without suffering uh, in the performance section. So uh, we also have a, uh, an application in here that's called Liquid Toolkit. And if we go in there, uh, we've got all kinds of different options. Obviously, you can see overclocking where we can come in here and we can set the maximum speed of the device to be as high as 1920 megahertz. Now I don't necessarily think that uh, you need to go that high with it and it's probably not going to run stable if you do. Uh, but I would recommend something around you know, the 1200 to 1400 uh, megahertz range and that's going to run you uh, pretty fast. Now we can also uh, come in and tweak our minimum and you can see here it's automatically set for default. So when the screen's off and a CPU's not really needed uh, to push anything, we're going to automatically downclock to 245 megahertz, which is going to save us on battery life. So with this, you're going to get increased performance, but you're probably also going to get increased battery life as well. So performance on hacked and modded ROMs is typically going to be a little bit better than what you're going to get with stock, but it's not necessarily the best you're going to get, and we're going to go into that with the next type of ROM, which is the open source ROM. The next ROM we're going to take a look at is Cyanogen Mod, and this is a Android open source project ROM, otherwise known as AOSP, and you'll see that abbreviation around. What that means is this is a source build. It's built off of Google source code, it's not an HTC overlay over top of Android that's then tweaked like you have on the uh, modded or hacked ROMs. This is actually uh, built from the ground up and compiled from Google Source. It uses some proprietary drivers and things like that from HTC to make that source code work with this particular hardware. But in general, you're going to have a very stock Android experience just like the Nexus S or the Nexus One. So it's basically going to feel like a Nexus type device, but you've got some additional uh, options and, and customizations that the stock Google builds don't have. So we've taken what Google has, it looks very much like that, but then it's been optimized and tweaked beyond what Google does. Now the customizations start right from the home screen. This may look like the stock Android launcher, however it is not. This is actually the ADW launcher that's been tweaked and modified to uh, increase performance over what the stock launcher provides. It does look very stock, I mean even the dock here at the bottom, but you can see here like this app drawer button, we can actually remove it, edit it, uh, replace these with something else, whereas with the stock Android build, that's not an option. So you can see that if we pull up all of our uh, widgets here, we've got stock Android widgets, all of our HTC widgets, and the HTC Sense overlay is completely removed. Moving on to the notifications and quick settings, we can pull down our shade here, and we've got what looks like a pretty stock notification shade. Uh, up at the top, we do have a few quick settings for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and turning sound on and off, but that's it. So we're pretty limited when it comes to our notifications on the uh, Cyanogen Mod ROM. Now briefly we're going to take a look at the settings menu and this is going to look a little bit different than the hacked or modded ROM, but it's basically the same. Everything's laid out in the same list. Uh, there are no categories or anything like that. We do have a few extra things in here that we're going to talk about in just a, a bit, but as far as the, uh, the settings go, it's pretty much stock Android. A couple of quick things I forgot to point out about the settings was the uh, in the Cyanogen mod settings, we've got uh, like lock screen, so we can go and change the different style of the lock screen. So we can change this, uh, like right now, I had it on uh, ring, so when you take a look at this, you've just got these two little rings that come out. Uh, you can also change it so that it's rotary, and what that looks like is just this uh, Android 2.0 uh, type rotary lock screen, which I always liked. And then you can look at something like lens, which is, I believe, a play on sense, because it looks like the uh, sense lock screen. And there you have it. So you got a couple of different options there in terms of your, uh, let's see here, your interface. We can go in and we can do some status bar tweaks. 
one of the things that we can do, you see up here I've changed the setting so that instead of having a battery icon, we've got a battery percentage. And this is where I changed that so we can change it back to uh, our icon. And then we just get our icon back there. And then different themes and stuff like that uh, will add different attributes to that. But I just wanted to show you those couple quick things. Now one of the places that CyanogenMod really excels is in the theme department. If we take a look here in the app drawer, we have an application for Theme Chooser. And this makes applying a theme really simple, really easy to do, and you can do it on the fly. So you can also download more of these. Right now we only have three installed on this, but if you go to the Android Market and type in CM7 or CyanogenMod, you're going to find that there's a whole bunch of different themes that you can download, and they just install as regular applications, and then they'll show up in this chooser, and you can go ahead and apply them. So whatever kind of look and feel you're going for, there's probably a theme for you. We're going to go ahead and apply this one now and show you what it looks like. And the first thing you're going to notice is that our messaging icon is turned to that cyan color. We've also got uh, the 4G logo plus the uh, status bar, or the uh, signal bar, and our battery icon has all changed. Uh, our dock down here, the colors have changed. And you'll notice that uh, throughout, like when we pull down the uh, menu here, instead of getting that uh, orange color that we were getting up at the top, you can see that when it hits and reaches the end, now it flashes that cyan color. So there's a lot you can do with the theme chooser, and the themes on Cyanogen Mod are really good, really easy to apply. Now in terms of performance, this is really what started CyanogenMod to be able to get a better performing device. I mean, this started with the G1, which wasn't a tremendously fast device, and part of the reason CyanogenMod was built was to improve on the user experience. And it really didn't change anything because the G1 was an unthemed device. Uh, but with CyanogenMod, it does run faster, it is smoother, and you have various other options. Like we can take a look go back to our settings menu and we've got cyanogen mod settings which is much like what was in liquid toolkit in the previous ROM but here it's built into the settings so really not a whole lot of performance difference there uh, we can go into performance and we can uh, tweak our CPU settings so we can change our max CPU frequency uh, goes all the way up to uh, 1800 on this particular kernel and then it clocks down to uh, 245 so you can set those however you like you can still obviously use uh, set CPU uh, if you'd like to I typically do use that because I like a little bit more control and I like to set up some profiles but uh, performance is really good on Cyanogen Mod. there is no moto blur there is no HTC sense there is no touch whiz it is stock Android for the most part and that in itself makes performance very fast. The third and final type of ROM we're going to discuss is MyUI. M -I -U -I. This is a uh, Chinese based ROM. It is increasingly becoming more and more popular. Many people say that if you're running this ROM you might as well just have an iPhone. And the reason is uh, the stock launcher is very similar to how uh, iPhone and iOS work versus how Android works. You will see that there is no uh, app drawer anywhere on this home screen. There's no way to get to a consolidated list of apps. This is it. You have a whole bunch of home screens and as you add more applications you're going to need more home screens. We can do the pinch to, pinch to zoom preview and you can change which is your default home screen. We can kind of pick this up and we can move this around. So now if we go back home, now when we had no uh, applications or anything to the left of the launcher, now you can see we do. So you can set up different screens for different types of things. Uh, you can set up custom folders and things like that. So if you long press, this looks kind of like the new uh, TouchWiz 4.0. Uh, and you can see that we've got uh, folders. Uh, favorite contacts, different widgets you can put in there. So that's kind of cool and it's consolidated like that. Uh, but uh, I miss not having an app drawer. So honestly, I love this ROM, but when I run it, I typically run it with Launcher Pro. Now one of the biggest reasons I love this ROM is because of the notification and quick settings that this ROM provides you with. If you pull down your notification shade 
this looks very similar to any build of Android. Uh, you can clear all your notifications, you can see your new emails, and you can tap those and go right into it. But you'll notice down here at the bottom that we've got toggles and notifications. Right now we're on the notifications tab because we have notifications. If we clear those notifications, now when we pull this down, we're taken immediately to our toggles because over here on our notifications, we don't have any. So on our toggles, we have a bunch of different quick settings and things that we can adjust. We can quickly turn sound off. We can turn automatic brightness on. We can turn that back off. We can adjust our brightness right here so you don't have to jump into the settings menu, navigate to where your brightness settings is if you need to change that quickly on the fly. So uh, the notification and toggle settings in this is far and away the best out of any of the ROMs in my personal opinion. Now another place that this ROM really excels is the settings department. So if we go in here into our settings, you can see instead of having one consolidated list of settings, we've got things uh, categorized into personal, system, and programs. So these are all our personal settings, things like sound, display, uh, LED, themes, and we'll go over that in a minute, uh, wallpapers, uh, launcher settings, fonts, uh, so you can install different fonts, all that kind of stuff. And it's all consolidated right here under personal. Under system, you'll see that we've got a variety of things like our network settings and uh, VPN, tethering, which is built into this uh, ROM. Uh, date and time, language, uh, an input, battery, all that kind of stuff. And then in our programs, we've got uh, all of our program attributes. And then we've got, uh, you know, calls, messaging, uh, all of our accounts that we've got set up. So it's really uh, set up very nicely and everything section so you can quickly get to what you're looking for instead of that long list that Android typically has which you just scroll through. One other thing real quickly about the settings, if we go into system and we go to our battery, um, we can monitor our battery usage or power usage uh, we can change the battery indicator style and this has been copied on Cyanogen Mod and you'll see this a lot on, on various uh, source build ROMs but you can see we can do this top bar and now this up at the top this bar here we've got a battery indicator that's just a long line which shows us a graphical representation of how much battery we have left so if we go back to our home screen we no longer have a battery icon up here but we do have this green bar and that's actually pretty cool and I like that and that's been built into a lot of builds of uh, Cyanogen Mod and, and other source build ROMs uh, but it started here first and it's a pretty cool addition. Now one of the places that my UI really shines is in the selection of themes. If we go to menu, settings, we go to our themes category, we've got all of our local themes here which have already been downloaded and then we've got online themes where we can go and we can install the hottest or the latest or we can search for various themes and if we go to our local themes here you can look through them and see what they're going to look like so you get this preview of what it's going to look like on your device you can see you know maybe you're not too thrilled about that red uh, status bar so you're not going to apply that theme but it gives you an instant preview before you go and install it on your device which is nice. Another thing you can do is go to this customize section and you can change individual aspects so you can change your lock screen and you can put a specific lock screen and when you change the theme of your lock screen you also change your uh, lock screen as well so like if we scroll down if we were to apply this lock screen down here which is the classic leather uh, you now have this zipper for a lock screen so it's going to change the way your lock screen functions. If we look at the stock lock screen we've got this pull down bar here and we can just simply pull down to unlock we can grab this and pull down to open SMS and we can pull this to uh, launch our dialer so you've got a variety of options there and with theming uh, they make it really easy to get the look and feel that you want in terms of performance, I've been pretty impressed with my UI in comparison with uh, Cyanogen Mod and other ROMs on the market. Uh, I know that you know some people will have different experiences based on what is your device, what is the current development like. Uh, you know, my UI may have more bugs, Cyanogen Mod may have more bugs, uh, but uh, in general, we've got some pretty stable builds here, and I would say that speed is right on with my UI and Cyanogen Mod. 
So I don't think you're going to see anything in terms of performance uh, one way or another. But if we look in here in the settings menu, there's no native way that I can find to overclock your device. So you will need a program like Set CPU or something like that. Alright, that's going to wrap up our overview of my UI, which is brought to us by Droid Vicious. Uh, hopefully this has been a good overview for you. Now you have a better idea of the types of ROMs that you're going to see out there. Typically, you're going to see the hacked and modded ROMs before you're going to see the source built ROMs like Cyanogen Mod and MyUI. Uh, that's just kind of the progression of things. You're going to see the, the tweaked ones first. So now at least you have a better idea of what's out there and you can sort through the ROM post uh, with a little bit under, uh, better understanding of what you're looking for and what type of ROM is going to be the best fit for you. This is Brian with TheUnlocker.com and we'll see you next time.